Hello, I'm Liam Dan, host of the NZ Herald podcast, Money Talks. We're back for our fifth season with an exciting range of guests. You can listen to Money Talks at nzherald.co.nz or on your favourite podcast app. New episodes every Saturday. You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. Round six of Nepal's ANZ Premiership this weekend. Tonight in Auckland, the Northern Stars up against the Central Pulse from 7.15. The game of the round, though, looks to be tomorrow, 10 past two in Rotodoa, the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic, welcoming the Northern Mystics to Rotodoa. Mystics goal shoot Grace Weke joins us for a chat. Grace, thanks for taking the time. You're top of the table, but the Magic are the only team to have beaten you this season, albeit in overtime. So how strong is the desire amongst you and your teammates to reverse that result? Yeah, we definitely want to get one back um, on them. It was a tough loss, and um, I think Magic was a better team on the night that day, but we're hoping to change that um, tomorrow. So Mystics are five from six, top of the table. So apart from that loss to the Magic, it's, um, it's gone pretty well for you. What has gone really well on the court for the Mystics so far this year? Yeah, I think to be fair, there's been a lot of continuity this season. It's the same team from last year. You know, we had that connection. And so the on-court stuff, um, we're building on a couple of years of time together. But I think this season, there's just this ambition, you know, falling short last year. We're just ready to take every game. And we know that we're capable of the win. And I think that's that confidence that we bring and go into every game that we know we can win. And it's more a matter of what we put out there and how we're continuing to do our game plan and um, plan that out in order to get that win. I was going to ask you about last season and, and whether, you know, defeat, uh, you know, right near the end of last season fuels the team this year in terms of its motivation. Is it a is it a strong motivating factor or is it just one of a number of factors? I think it's definitely one of a number of factors, but um, yeah, it's, it's quite up there. I feel that, you know, falling short last year I and mean, then all that was said and um, I guess the challenge with the team to, you know, diversify and, you know, strengthen our team across the court and on the bench has been a massive intent this season. And so we feel that we have a lot to prove and that anyone can come on the, on the court and perform well. We can take anyone on and off and that we've got, yeah, yeah just the message to send that the entire team is capable. All right. When you go onto the ANZ Premiership website and you click on stats and you look at the shooting stats, uh, you're right at the top there in terms of percentages. 94.7% you're shooting, the best in the comp. Uh, What do you put this consistency that you've managed to achieve down to? Yeah, I think I've always had pretty high standards for myself as an individual. So I know that I want to be shooting accurately every game and I struggle when I'm not. And so um, just having that as the status quo I guess for me when I play I just know that I have to keep um, putting those shots up and getting them in Um, but obviously we're training hard every week on training and shooting at trainings and um, in and out of um, team time so I feel that it's just become part of like I guess my role as a shooter to keep practicing keep getting better so um, for me that's just like part of my job. And in terms of the mystic strategy around the shooting circle, um, you know, you're so uh, so powerful under the under the hoop. What percentage, for example, of shots ideally would you take in a game? Like, would you take seven out of every ten shots in a game? Is that the strategy? Um, it definitely seems that way, but I wouldn't say that it's our strategy. I guess it's just the way that um, the game ends up being played out. Um, there definitely is an intent to, you know, involve our goal attacks more, get them with more ball in hand, taking penalties and ideally taking more shots. I know that the style that we play of the holding circle um, and the rolling goal attack is that the goal shoot will end up with more ball in hand and we'll be going to the post more. But we definitely are working on involving them more, you know, um, just so that they can get an opportunity to keep working on their shot. Yeah, Monica Faulkner has been your, your shooting circle partner for, for much of the season. Uh, how important is she to the overall productivity of the team? Yeah, she is a workhorse. She's been working and training really hard this season and performing really well. You know, she, goal attack is sometimes a thankless job. Like, they run the lines and they open up the space so that the feeders can have a clear option into me. But she's doing a load of work up the front to, um, you know, get that attacking end moving. And in terms of getting the ball into both yourself and Monica, uh, Peter Toyava is, is right up there in terms of the stats, in terms of feeds into the into the shooting circle. Um, you know, how key is she to the overall game plan and your productivity in the circle? Yeah, she is the um, CEO of the attacking end. She's the <laughs> boss down there. You know, like, we just do what we're told. She 
such an amazing leader, you know, can read the game so well. She's massive to our team in defence and especially on attack. She just knows so much about the game and really helps us in those moments where we just need someone to go. She's that person who'll step up to the plate and really lead that end. Given all of that, though, I'm sure a lot of opposition teams believe if they can stop you, they can go a long way towards beating the Mystics. So how do you deal with the attention that you always get from opposition defenders? Yeah, it's definitely challenging at times, I feel, sometimes. I guess with the umpire calls that go for and against me, like it's very easy to get a victim mentality around what's happening. I know that a lot of times when teams can't turn ball over their result to being really physical or trying to throw me off mentally rather than actually attacking ball. But we do a lot of work around mental skills and um, how to deal with those moments where you feel like everything is going against you and you're not getting the calls that you deserve. Um, I think I know going into games I'm prepared to be bashed around and beaten up and know that that's, sometimes that's their game plan. And I think I'm happy to you know be that player who, who takes that and I guess make that sacrifice if that means that you know, we're still scoring ball, we're still, um, you know, winning games. And it's almost um, it's almost like I know that if that's all they've got, then I've beaten them already if they have to result to that kind of play in order to try and um, throw our end off. Is there something that you've had to sort of come to terms with though, over the last couple of years? I, I can't imagine coming in as a, as a teenager into the top level that you would have been physically or mentally prepared for that sort of, um, for that sort of treatment. Oh, definitely. If I had to learn the hard way, I, um, it was definitely a shock to me my first, I guess, two seasons, just realising what the um, landscape was like and how the game is umpired and how players, and what you can and can't get away with. Um, yeah, it's, and it's still a learning sometimes because there are times you do feel like you deserve a call or you've just been um, so hard done by, but you really just have to move on. And it's still, I'm still learning. There are moments where I can really get, you know, emotional with the umpire or what's happening on court, but it's just really separating that and parking everything each quarter, coming in and out and being able to refresh. Because I'd imagine too that if you start doing that, if you start showing displeasure with umpires' calls, then that almost opens up a bit of a mental crack um, for opposition players to kind of, you know, to, to exploit, does it? You know, they can see perhaps that things are getting to you and they might try and exploit that even more. Does that happen occasionally? Yeah, that's exactly how it works. And I feel that if I'm emotional or I show my frustrations or reactions, then that's almost um, that positive reinforcement to the def- um, defenders that this is working, you know, Grace is getting upset. We just need to keep doing this, keep throwing her off, and then that's where I'll miss a shot or I'll, you know, take the ball wrong and whatever. So it's really just as as frustrated as I am on the inside, I do my best not to show it. I just don't want to give away anything. Oh, good on you. Good stuff. And what about the pressure you feel around being, you know, the, the main source of goals for the Mystics? Does, is that, a, is that a, a weight that you that you can, you know, bear comfortably on your shoulders? Yeah, I don't feel the pressure. I feel that. It's just the way that I play. And when I'm on court, that's my game style. And that's what, I see that as my strength. Um, and then if a different shooter comes on, it's a moving circle and they can deliver um, a similar product in a different way. So I feel that it's just the combination that's there in the moment and all it has to do with my job, which I enjoy doing and I find comes um, quite easily to me. So I feel that there's not a lot of pressure. It's just me going out to play every day and just doing what I enjoy. Terrific. And just on a wider um, a wider uh, scenario in terms of this year for netball, massive year as we all know, World Cup coming up in the middle of the year in South Africa. Uh, how often does that sort of, uh, you know, <laughs> come into your mind? Is it something that you, that you purposely try to keep out of your mind or, or do you allow yourself to think about playing at the World Cup? Yeah, I've definitely thought about the World Cup this year. Yeah, you know, we were in Cape Town just in January um, for the quad series, and it was kind of like a trial run for our processes um, for those who were selected um, in August. And so it's definitely in the back of my mind. I'm trying to focus more on the season, which is um, the goal is to be ANZ Premiership champion. So that is where my focuses are at. But I'd be lying if I said that, I, um, you know, further ahead I'm not thinking about... Um, you know, the World Cup and selections and the process and all that that comes with. And I think it's more of an exciting thing rather than pressure. I'm really um, hopeful to get selected and doing the best that I can to do so. But I think if you're playing well in AMZ and, you know, um, focusing on that, then it's likely that you'll be 
playing rough or selective and selections will come. Absolutely. And I read a, read an article uh, earlier this year about the, the fact that you, um, oh, you're obviously of uh, of Nigerian descent um, and that you were you were keen at some stage to get back to Nigeria to, um, you know, to, I guess, reconnect over there or to connect over there. Have you had the chance to do that yet or will you have the chance? I haven't had the chance yet. You know, I've been very... Um, preoccupied this year with netball, but <laughs> yeah, I'm enough. hoping um, in the off season, um, I de- hopefully either following World Cup if that comes up, or just um, in my own time when the season's over, I do intend to go back to Nigeria and connect with my family and go with my parents and just yeah, I think it'd be a massive um, moment for me to be able to really see where I'm from and have that um, you know reconnect. Awesome. Hey, Grace, it's been awesome catching up with you. Thanks so much for taking the time today. All the best tomorrow and for the rest of this ANZ Premiership season with the Mystics. And, uh, yeah, we can't wait to see how it all plays out. And then, of course, on towards the World Cup. Fingers crossed as well. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks very much. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio. Hello, I'm Liam Dan, Business Editor-at-Large for the New Zealand Herald. And I'm back with another season of my podcast, Money Talks. In this series, we're not going to tell you how to get rich. We're not going to try and pick the next interest rate move. Instead, I'll be talking to some interesting New Zealanders about how money has shaped their lives and what they've learned about it through the years. Join us every Saturday for a new chat with an exciting range of guests from the world of business, politics and entertainment. You can find Money Talks with me, Liam Dan, wherever you get your podcasts.